The kitchen behind me isn't real, but it has been completely modeled in my Archicad template and it's ready for you to use in your own projects. What's going on team? My name is David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia and thank you so much for joining me today. Just last week, we surpassed 100,000 subscribers and the beautiful plaque arrived today. So thank you so much to all of you who have supported this journey over the last five years and continue to grow and learn in the architecture space with me. Now, today is all about kitchens. It's all about the cabinetry, the details, the backsplashes, the porcelain, the quartz, and everything in between. So let's turn around to this screen and let me show you what's new in the Ultimate Archicad template. There has been some serious work into this template to make it as good as it is for the kitchens. In front of me right now is my show kitchen and the display piece for this entire model. So as you'll see on first glance, we have everything you could possibly need from cooktops to range hoods, sinks, fridges, ovens, and everything in between. Everything has been modeled in 3D and then we have a series of 2D details, but we'll get to them later on. If we jump to the very bottom in cabinetry under our resources, I've dedicated an entire page to everything that we need. And to make it easy for everybody, I've made sure that all of these items are free and available with the template. So let's go through them one by one. First of all, we have our drawers sections. If we open it up, you'll see I've automatically created the drawers in a light oak color with a 12 mil porcelain top. That's repeated for 600 mil, 450 cutlery drawers and a pull-out bin. If we take a look at our 450 cutlery drawers, you'll see they're not equal, so the top drawer is perfect for cutlery. I'll jump in the middle here, team, to let you know if you're looking to download the Ultimate Archicad template, it's available down below via Patreon. It is as cheap as it gets for an Archicad template, and I've spent hundreds of hours on this already. By the time it's finished, there'll be thousands and thousands of hours done to make this the absolute best template going. So feel free to check it out and of course, cancel anytime you like. Then of course, we have the next row, which is identical to the top, all the same drawers, but of course, with a backsplash automatically added to it. Now, if you're looking at this backsplash and thinking, that's a really nice stone, I don't have that in Archicad, well, don't worry. I spent a good two, three hours going through and including some incredible stones. So in my surfaces, we have engineered quartz slabs and we have porcelain slabs. These all come from Ambassador Stone here in Australia. Not sponsored by Ambassador Stone at all, but they have an incredible selection of stone. And at the same time, they're very market focused. So all of these are provided by Ambassador Stone so that I can include them exactly as they are, high res, individual textures. So if I quickly scroll through, you'll see a series of engineered slabs, same with the porcelain. Now, what you'll also notice is I've labeled these slabs 32 by 1600 by 12 mil, which is the size of the sheet. Same with the quartz slab, 32 by 1600 by 20 mil. Now, I've done this because time and time again, I'll forget how large a slab is. So here is an easy and quick reference. If your bench tops are longer than 32, so for instance, in this kitchen scenario, this rear bench is massive. You have to keep in mind that there will be a join line somewhere and somewhere we're going to have to book match it. But irrespective, all of those slabs are now available to you. You can go ahead, import them, change them, do whatever you like. And Tundra is the slab I've used in my standard default template. Let's move back to our main kitchen essentials. Of course, with drawers, we have to have cupboards. Now we have a single cupboard and below that we have a double cupboard. What some of the keen eyed observers would have noticed already is these cupboards are set to 950 millimeters high. Now in Australia, that is not the standard. The standard is 900 millimeters. However, the issue with a 900 millimeter countertop is most Australians and most people in the world, to be honest, are rather tall and we're getting taller and taller as generations go on. So a 900 cupboard is perfect for anybody about 1600 millimeters tall. But if you're 1700 or 1800 like I am, then these cupboards are a little bit too short. So for me personally, and for most of the people that I encounter and ask, a 950 millimeter cupboard is the absolute perfect height. Similarly, if we look at our footing details in these cabinets, you'll see I've got a 120 mil high kickboard and a 70 mil deep toe. Now, once again, the standard here in Australia is not that. The standard is 150 by 50, but there's a couple of problems with that. 
First of all, 150 up and down is fine if you've got big shoes or if you've got steel cap boots on, which can still fit in 120. But what's worse is the 50 mil kick just isn't far enough. Anybody with larger feet or even somebody that wants to stand a little bit close to the cupboard is always gonna kick their toe. So a 70 mil kick recessed back is absolutely perfect. So that's why these cupboards have been set up in that manner. Everything is fine tuned in this. If you wanted to go through, pause this slowly, redocument yourself, you're more than welcome to, but just this cabinetry and this cupboard has taken me a whole week to document. So there's plenty of information here that you're gonna absolutely love in this template. Now, I haven't gone and made these favorites for one particular reason. I wanna make this as realistic and as feasible as possible. So that comes into effect when we look at our sink. If I open up our sink, I'm able to make the sink something pretty close to what you can buy. So for instance, I've modeled this on an ABI double bowl sink. If we go down, you can see the dimensions are pretty much bang on and I've made sure the ABI color is fine tuned in there as well. But what you can't make work perfectly is the tap. There's some awesome taps, yes, but there's also some very generic stuff. For me personally, I really want the tap to be as lifelike as possible. So I'm using my ABI Interiors tap. This is a full pull out three-way commercial tap that we put in almost every single high-end residential home. So that's why it's on my default template. If we jump into my 3D and zoom in to the single kitchen sink over on the left-hand side of this design, you'll see that the kitchen cabinetry below is one item with the backsplash automatically included and the tap is a second. It is an undermount sink perfectly aligned with no issues whatsoever. Now, what you'll also notice is I've got 900, 600, 450, 450, and all sorts of different dimensions. There's a reason. Custom cabinetry is awesome. You can make whatever size you want, but at the same time, there's limitations and there's ways to be smarter about it. So by using the repetition of 900 mil wide cupboards with two doors and 600 mil wide single doors, we're able to create a cheaper product that still looks as high end without having to cut it to 204 mil, 608 mil or random numbers. There's always going to be one or two random numbers. So for instance, in my scullery here, I've got two ovens, which we'll get to a little bit later on, a pantry, and then a single pantry as well. That pantry is two mil short of 600 because it just doesn't fit in that space. Now, I could go ahead and I could increase the wall, I could do all sorts of things, but there's always gonna be one or two cupboards that aren't perfect, hence custom cabinetry. The overhead cupboards, very similar. They've been perfectly set up. They've been aligned to make sure they're the right size and that they're showcasing on the floor plan correctly. The pantry, same sort of style. It is one gigantic cupboard, but in this scenario, I've actually got a handle on it rather than a pull handle. Now, that's only because of the limitations of Archicad. If you go into the knob settings here, we don't have a handle that's long enough to be nice enough. We can use the L shape on the side as an example and have it the full height at 2.7, which be nice enough, but I decided against it. So I've just left it as a standard little deep pull handle. Additionally, everything else in this project is pull handles or secret handles, which again, we don't have the ability, unfortunately, in ARCHICAD by default. So the bull nose is what I've used everywhere else, but it's only top, bottom, or top and bottom. We don't have the ability to put it on the side just yet. There is times that you will need to use your pantry as a wall as well, or as a separating device. So in this scenario here, the back of this pantry isn't a clean face, whereas on this side, it is a perfect clean face. So we can use it as a double-sided object. Of course, we have our corner cupboards, if we ever need them, and our island benches. Now, making it really simple for everybody, 900 island bench, no ends, 900 island bench, one end, cupboards and drawers. So again, in the 3D, we have exactly that. We have our island bench, which comprises of multiple items. So this is our island bench with one end and all of these are island benches without an end. All of them have a 300 millimeter overhang and a 100 mil deep face. Sometimes we might need cupboards, sometimes we might need drawers, other times we might want to pull out bin, which of course in our kitchen we have our 450 pull out bin and I've conveniently tucked that at the very end next to my kitchen sink. So if you're doing any washing, chopping, you can throw it directly into the sink here. All of the items above that require a backsplash have been dragged and dropped lower. 
Now, at the very bottom of this table, we have all of our appliances. And Archicad has some terrible, terrible appliances, especially their fridges. So I've gone ahead, downloaded all of the Fisher & Paykel fridges, which we talked about in a previous video for this Ultimate Archicad Template Build Series. And I've now started using them in the actual projects. So we have our double fridge and our single fridge with overhead cupboards above, and then we just have standalone fridges if we need them. If I spin around the back side of my model, you'll see my Fisher & Paykel fridge is perfectly aligned underneath my overhead cabinetry. Now, this Fisher & Paykel fridge isn't perfect, but it is significantly better than anything that Archicad has to offer. And it is an exceptional photorealistic item that when we take this into rendering software, this really stands out. Similarly, we have our oven stacks, one with an empty microwave stack and another with two ovens. So I've gone ahead and put two double stack ovens in this project because basically one of these will be a microwave oven, the other will be steam ovens or typical ovens themselves. Again, this is a Fisher & Paykel object, so it is highly detailed and significantly better than anything Archicad has to offer. In our scullery, you'll also see a couple extra items. So the double drawer sink is in effect here, and I've changed some of the overhead cabinetry to have a little bit more detail and depth. So this isn't in the template, this is adjusted for this specific model, but it's not on this kitchen items element. We wanna be using this as our starting base and then adjusting these items slightly for each individual project. Dishwashers, of course, same scenario. We've got a recess only. So if you're doing some basic drafting documentation, you can pop in the recess only for the dishwasher. What I've just realized is it needs a back panel. So I better add that in and update it. Press OK. Now we also have our built-in dishwasher, which I'm using the Arcad model for because it's relatively simple, relatively basic, and it does the job. So I'm happy with that one there. However, our double draw dishwasher is of course, once again, courtesy of the Fisher & Paykel models. It isn't perfect, which bugs me a little bit. So I'm gonna to continue to hunt for a better model. This handle at the very bottom should also be at the top, but we're getting into semantics there and it's not the end of the world. And more realistically, we're gonna be using the integrated double drawer dishwashers, which is what I've modeled here. So in our 3D model, we have our double drawer dishwasher next to our scullery sink, perfectly aligned, ready to go. The last two items are the most common in absolutely every kitchen and their cooktops and range hoods. These have all been modeled as either a 900 or a 600 cooktop. And in this scenario, I've actually just gone ahead and used the standard Archicad object built into the base cabinetry because I'm going with an induction cooktop. As you can see, I do have the Fisher & Paykel induction cooktops available here. So if you wanted to switch it out, you could, especially if you're going to a gas model and needed those burners to be visible. Technically, you can switch it to a five-style gas burner and still have those burners visible. It's just very obvious that Fisher & Paykel is significantly nicer. But for the purposes of my template, I've gone with induction because that is what most of my clients end up using. The range hood, again, Fisher & Paykel objects because they're so much nicer than anything Arcad has to offer. We have a 900 and we have a 600 option. Now in the main model, I've gone ahead and cladded it. So I've created a new wall composite to be able to wrap it around with cabinetry and completely hide that range hood. And if I turn my cut line off, we'll see our ceiling's been modeled, some of our doors have been put in, all of the hard work that we've been putting in prior to this moment now is all starting to come together. At the same time, I promised some 2D details. So let's go back to them. Cabinetry is awesome, but if you don't have the right details or if your cabinet maker isn't on the same page as you, you're going to have a very different outcome to what you're probably envisioning. So I've gone ahead and documented quartz bench tops with finger pulls, porcelain bench tops with finger pulls, which is an identical detail. Just instead of having 20 and 20, we've got a 12 mil and a six mil panel. I've provided a typical finger pull draw detail, then a quartz bench top to flush doors and a porcelain bench top to flush doors. A typical detail of how we miter the corners if we're gonna do a 50 mil stone thickening or 100 mil stone thickening. I haven't separated these out to quartz and to porcelain because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how thick this stone is, the overall reveal is what matters. Then we have our quartz overhang and our porcelain overhang. So that's specifically for this section here. 
for our breakfast bar. And I've indicated that I want at least 150 millimeters return on that stone. Now, depending on the projects, depending on the budgets, you might be able to push that into the full 300. So it's very, very clean. But for most use cases, 150 mil return is more than sufficient for anybody who will ever notice anything in that house. Only a couple of details left, of course, our kickboard, showcasing how our cupboards should stop if we have LED strip lighting, and what happens at one of our most critical intersections. What people don't think about is cabinetry goes in at different times depending on the floor material. If it's a timber floor, the floor comes in after and the cabinetry comes in first. If it's a concrete floor or a tiled floor, then most of the time the tiles and the concrete go first and our cupboards come in over the top. So when we have a timber floor, we don't wanna see another skirting, another scotia, another bit on top of our beautiful cabinetry. So we need to cut our kickboards back and slide our timber flooring underneath as a negative detail. It's a lot of work, but the end result is absolutely worth it. And the last two, of course, are our overhead cabinetry, finger pulls of how they're detailed for our overheads with our LED strip light and the position of that LED strip light. And of course, how I would like the cabinetry to interact with the ceiling. Now for me, I like negative shadow line details. So a simple 18 mil MDF shadow line setback is absolutely perfect. All of that has been documented on the floor plan and will continue to be improved as this template goes on. I'm gonna leave it in the template this time and I'm gonna slowly build out this house week by week, month by month, year by year until this template is finished which might not be ever, let's be honest. There is so many amazing things that we can add to our ArchiCAD templates. Anyway, that's all from me, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.